Hello, everyone. This is from Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Daniel Goodman, and over there is John, graphic man Lewandowski. Our show is brought to you by the wonderful folks at Hockey Walker, 202 West Howard Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You can call them at 414-800-7585 or visit their website at hockeylockermilwaukee.com. Today, the Milwaukee Admiral took on the Texas Stars, a.k.a. the Junior Thin Mints. Uh, all right. So shots on goal in the first period, Texas outshot Milwaukee eleven to nine. In the second period, Milwaukee outshoots Texas ten to eight. In the third period, Texas outshoots Milwaukee twelve to seven. And in total, Milwaukee outshoots Texas twenty or Texas outshoots Milwaukee thirty one to twenty six. Now we get into the interesting part. <laughs> interesting, huh? <laughs> <laughs> on the power play Texas goes 2 for 5 with 22 minutes 11 infractions while Milwaukee goes 2 for 7 with 31 minutes 10 infractions now I will add in that that Reed Schaefer's um, charging misconduct is bull crap That was in the first. That is uh, 15 minutes of those uh, 31 penalty minutes. Yeah. Just thought I'd add that in. That was a call. He finished his check. The guy had his head down. That was not on Schaefer. Schaefer's not dirty like that. So I'm just going to say that and get that out of the way right now. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Scoring in the first period at the 331 mark for the Admirals is Mark Delgado scoring his first of the postseason, assisted by Zach LaRue, his second, and Igor Afanasiev, his first. Then at the 614 mark, Texas scores the goal from Justin Hyrakowin, scoring his second of the postseason on the power play, assisted by Christian Kairou and Frederick Car uh, Kairou's fifth and Frederick Carlstrom's third. Then at the 11-19 mark on the power play for the Admirals was Phil Tomasino scoring his second, assisted by Ryan Ufko, his first, and Yuso Parson and his first. Then at the 12-22 mark for the Admirals, Zach LaRue scores his first, assisted by Yuso Parson and his second, and Igor Afanasiev, his second, that was on the power play. Ooh. At the 16:48 mark for Texas, Kyle McDonald scores his second uh, of the postseason. Assisted by Emilio Pedersen, his second. That was also on the power play. All righty. Scoring in the second shorthanded was Roland McEwen, his first. His Then uh, assisted by Zach LaRue, his third, and Kevin Graval, his first. Then uh, Mark Delgado gets his second of the postseason, second of the game, with an assist from LaRue. His one, he had one, two, third of the third assist of the game, uh, his fourth of the postseason, and you so parsed in his third. And then in the third, at the uh, eight-second mark, was Oscar Beck scoring his first with an assist from Mate Blummel, his fourth, and Frederick Carlstrom, his fourth. Three stars of the game were Kevin Graval with a goal, or I'm sorry, with a goal, with an assist. Our second star of the game was Mark Delgado with two goals, and first star of the game was Zach Baru with three assists and one goal. In net for starting the game was Remy Poirier. He stopped 14 of 19. Um, and then Ben Cross stopped 7 of 7. Uh, in net for the Admirals was Troy Grostick. He stopped 28 of 31. That can't be right. 4,651. And uh, that did not sound that like, okay, apparently that was a very loud 4,000. Um, but yes, um, Schaefer got a game misconduct for for charging. Uh, there were a lot of penalties in this game. Unsportsmanlike. Let's see. Can we go through the list here? High sticking. 
delay a game, cross checking, charging, roughing, interference, hooking, tripping, high sticking, slashing, holding. <laughs> I'm just going, I'm not going through the penalty book. I'm talking about the ones that were called. <laughs> so, um, there's that as well. Um, in that note, I do believe yes. Okay, on Sunday, Grand Rapids, uh, decided to bounce Rockford. Rockford has been eliminated, so whoever wins this series will face Grand Rapids. Oh, to add into that. Um, oh, was it? Uh, LaRue played really well tonight. Igor played well tonight. He seemed a little frustrated at times, but he played really well. Um, Mutter played well as far as bringing the physicality. Um, Gross uh, took an exception at one point to Troy getting slashed at the end of the second period. Um, he was on his way to the bench and got he was kind of letting the guy know he was there by tapping him in the back, and the guy slashed him right in the ankles below the skin below the goalie pads. If he had just hit the pads, nobody would have bothered, but it was below the goalie pads, so it was by the skates. Not cool. Um, uh, anything you want to add, John? No, I thought it was a pretty good game. Um, you know, they definitely, we definitely brought the energy um, as far as the fan base goes. Um, I don't know if you could hear us on your TV or anything like that, but... Yeah, somewhat. I know that we were pretty rampant throughout the game. Um, we were even doing our chance. Normally, we don't during the second period, but we're we're doing them all periods, all, you know. we're not, We have no chill right now. Let's give everything you got. And if the players are going to do that, we're going to do that for them. We're going to give them our energy. We're going to let them feed off of us, which is exactly what we said we needed to do in game two video. So the difference between game this game and that game, we scored on the power play. We scored shorthanded. We beat them. You know, chase the goalie. Yeah. But now I will say this. Um, uh, we'll see what happens going forward, but it'll nice. It, it'll definitely be a change of pace to see what's going to happen going forward with the Admirals. Um, Jenko brought the energy for the lineup, uh, given the call out for, for the starters. Um, just you know, every little bit helps having those guys there, you know? So, um, what do you think they need to do to even this? Because uh, a repeat of tonight may not fare well. No, I mean, they got to duplicate what they did tonight, but they also got to clean up things like not taking dumb penalties. I mean, now Texas there are a couple that they they shouldn't have taken. There, there now now. You gotta get it to the playoffs, and it's intense and whatever. But that's when you need to have the most self discipline to be like, okay, I shouldn't do this right now, even though I want to. Now I will say this: Weatherby's roughing call that was not that was not roughing. That may have been a cross check to the head but that was after the guy dragged him to the ice punched him in the face you know what i mean like you get this dude literally you know mm -hmm. and, and they got away with it pretty much it, it evened it up because he reacted that's that moment where you just sit there and just take the pounding All right 
I know it sucks. I know that you want to defend yourself. I know that, you know what I mean? Like, there's a high risk for injury. Right. I mean, it also kind of looked like they let off the gas a little bit in the third period, and they got to just keep playing a full 60 minutes. No, I if you're think, up, like, you, you got I it. Say in the third, though, they also kind of put their screws to them defensively. Yeah. They knew they had it in the bag. It's just put clamp down defensively, give them nothing, and get out of your zone as much as you can. And, and they did okay in that area today. Um, let's see. Uh, we've got... I mean, the only thing I had have to, other thing I have to add is about the Schaefer hit. I mean, I went back and looked at it three times, and it almost looked like he left his foot and his elbow went into his head and then the head into the glass. So I don't know. I, I Like I said, I rewound it and watched it three times. But um, from the replays, we were able to see it happened right in front of me. So Okay. Um, I didn't see him leave his feet. It almost looks like he was sliding to his side, trying to, like, avoid it, but still make, like, minimal contact with the head area, and he put his head down. Now, you will, you can see that, that yeah. he kind of goes down a little bit before it. I, I mean, I don't think it was dirty at all. I think it was completely accidental, but it looked really bad. <laughs> and I think that's why it got called. Because he... He did it the uh, okay, so I was sitting there and the, the hit happened, they skated away, and then the ref put his arm up. Right. So that was a little severe for that much of a delay. You get where I'm going with that? Yeah. You know? Um at the 744 mark, uh you had roughing up McKenzie interference on Emilio Pedersen. Roughing on uh, Igor, roughing on Del Gaizo, roughing on Weatherby. That was not fun. By the way, who taught these guys how to how Texas how to clear the puck? Delay a game, delay a game. Uh, delay a game. They took three delay a game penalties for shooting the puck over the glass. Yeah. That's just not something you can do at in, you know, and I, I I'm I'm not defending the Admirals for trying to capitalize on it. I'm I'm calling out Texas and saying this is something you don't do in the playoffs. Right. And I will say that they were cheap shotting guys like Tomasino and and um uh Parson in a lot. I saw that. They were trying to get under those guys' skin. And uh Kemmel laid out. Big hit in that third. Yeah. Um, and and Kemmel's not known for that. But it is nice to see that that's something that he's adding to his his um repertoire, his is hitting and checking, and, and that's something that like Tabasito, Tabasito needs to be that go-to guy on offense, much like Trot said in the interview yesterday for the for the Preds, is that he needs to develop, he needs to put in the work, and he needs to play a two-way physical game. Now, I understand that you want to be have your skill set as high as possible, but if you put in the work in the game, the skills will come way easier. Yeah. So your skill set will just take over. That's how you take over a game. But you got to be willing to put the work in. And, and that's what they're calling him out for. That's why they sent him to us. Um, you know, and, and he showed them, hey, I can be that guy. But you have to be able, once you, you can be that guy here. Easy. You got to be that guy there. The goal is right here. That's the goal. Every guy that is here, that's the goal. Unless you're Ozzy Weissblatt, which is San Jose. <laughs> Um, but you get where I'm going. The NHL's the goal. Yeah. So, you know, as much as they may love playing for us fans and love playing here, that's still the goal. Right. This is just a pit stop for some of them. Um, you know, LeBru showed tonight that he's more than capable. Um, 
like we said, uh, you know, another guy that kind of stood out tonight was um was Parson and Parson had, had a great game. Um Igor had a good game, but he, his temper got a little bit to him. First time I saw somebody get in Troy's head a little bit. Um <laughs> But looking back at game two, yeah, no, this is game one. So the difference between game one and game two, game one, no power play goals for either team. Uh, game two. Uh, Texas had one power play goal, while we only had one power play. You know, so one of those things. Uh, now, for them, Luke Chris in the playoffs has had two assists. But this year, um, he's played one game. Or 12 games, he had one goal, one assist, minus three. Um, in the playoffs, he's got two assists. Uh, the plus two. Um, from the looks of what happened to him, it, it doesn't look good. It doesn't look... He had that glazed over look on his, you know, in his eyes when I when I could see like his, you know, when he, when they got him up by us. Yeah. He had that glazed over look. Um, And that's early. That, I like, guess a guy who had concussions, that's not something you want. Yeah, no. Um, so we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, their bench looked a little thin towards the end of that game, too. I'm wondering how many of their guys got banged up in this game. Because we did play very physical. Yeah. It was a very physical game. Neither team wanted to lose. Um. It's definitely going to be interesting to see you know, what's, you know, the, on the flip side, what's Texas got to do to flip the script? What do they got to do to get, get a W here? All right. Like, you know, I don't think they're going to be able to take us out of the game as far as us fans. I I just don't see it. We're too rampant right now. Um, from what I saw this game and what I hope to see on Friday, um, there's that, you know, you got, what, two days? Yeah. So, what do you think they do in those two days? And if they do have guys banged up, uh, how do you how do you plug the gap? Because... Uh -huh. I don't know. It 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 doesn't seem like they changed their game. Texas changed their game plan much coming into this game. Uh, they play a very physical and quick style of hockey, and that's how they like it. We play a more calculated style, and right? Style. So we're both physical teams, but one's calculated, where one's speed. Now our penalty kill has speed. <laughs> hmm. Um. Sometimes we'd rather be on the penalty kill than be on the power play. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I do think we did have more shorthanded goals this year than years previous. Yeah, I, that is that is definitely one thing that that I've you know showed it been interested in. Um, since our Last show, uh, some things have changed around the league. Uh, the AHL announced that the uh, Wolves will be back with Carolina. Um, not exactly sure to this extent of how I feel about it, but... Um, 
I, 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 the I, Islanders I, announced that was going to return next year as head coach. Okay. Um, the AHL has also announced that its president and CEO gets a multi-year extension. Oh yeah, I did see that today. Um, he held us up through COVID and all that. Um. Um, uh, Ontario beats Abbotsford, Hartford beats Providence, uh, Cleveland beats Bellevue, and well, Lehigh Valley beats Hershey. Wow. Um, currently, Coachella Valley and Calgary are 6 5 with a minute 40. 39. Okay, so the Hawks wedding. <laughs> yeah, there's not a whole lot of time in this game left. Oh, holy hell. One, two, three, four, five, six goals in the third period alone. Shorthanded power play, power play, power play, shorthanded. Oof. Um, you know, um, at this time, what do you, th who do you think is the biggest threat in the playoffs left in the A? Um, much as I hate to say it, I still think Hershey and Coachella Valley are probably the two biggest. I'd agree there. Um, I'd say uh, Grand Rapids would be one, too. They just yeah. put it, they were playing towards the end of the season. Um, yeah, those teams seem to have carried a lot of momentum into the playoffs. Um, so it, it's kind of one of those things where I'm a little skeptical about wanting to run into a buzzsaw at times. Right. Um, but you never know. You There's always ways to counteract that buzzsaw. Um, with all of that added as well, um, who's your pick for the cup? Because I know that right now, the NHL, you know, my my pick is is the Rangers. Um, I just think that they're hot right now. I do too. I mean, I'd love to say the Avalanche, but the Rangers, I feel, are one of the hottest teams right now. And overall, I mean... I mean, I wouldn't mind seeing a Rangers Stanley Cup either. It's been a while since they've had one. I mean, like, I wouldn't mind Edmonton. I wouldn't mind Florida. I wouldn't mind the Rangers. I wouldn't mind... As much as I hate to say it, I wouldn't mind Dallas, but I'm not a big fan. I just don't want Vancouver to win it. <laughs> That's just biasness. They eliminated us, so I want them eliminated kind of thing. You know, and I can say this, it's not going to be the same for the Admirals. All right. Because, go ahead, you're going to run into that Hershey buzzsaw. I just think our Hershey Hershey is number one for a reason in the league in a lot of statistic categories. And it's because of the way that they play. Now, we play a very similar game to them. So it would be an interesting matchup. Likelihood of us getting there right now as we sit. But there's still that little sliver of hope. As long as there's hope, there's a chance. Are you telling me there's a chance? <laughs> <laughs> you get where I'm going with that one. You know, this is the playoff. Playoffs! <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, But I do think that it was the right choice. I like now, and John knows this. I love watching Yarrow play to death. 
I love Yarrow. Yarrow's a great goalie. I just don't think that this series is the one for him. I I I, I think that Texas has had his number in the past. Mm. And and I I I I would be skeptical. Troy played very well today. He looked very odd. Um, and as we said, it was do or die. All right. And they did. Um, do or die again on Friday. You know, from there, it's anybody's game. But at least you, we didn't get swept. <laughs> right. That's the upside. Um, on, on, on the on the flip of that one, so um, do you think at any point that the the changes that are being made, um. you know, will affect this and I don't know. Um, the, yeah. the system and do you think that a lot of these guys are going, okay, well, Nashville's looking to make a splash they want to get better. They want to get better. They want to get better. Well, maybe I'm part of the answer. So let's get after it. All right. I, I mean, I think there's definitely more motivation for the, the Admirals players to step it up as much as possible to show Nashville and the people up there that, hey, maybe we don't move on from you. Maybe, you know. Maybe we keep you. You know, and that's that's the big part. Now, we know that we have a lot of rookies. Yeah. And we know we're going to have more next year. <laughs> that's just how it is. Yeah. But what? no matter what happens, as long as we have hockey here, it, it, it's always competitive. We, we may not always be division winners win the cup but it's always competitive yeah they they seem to every year get better better and better with the crowds um now i don't know if john knows this but i went on the podcast page and he posted do or die and i took that photo and posted it back into our story with the dual Thanks from Star Wars. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because that's what it felt like going into this game. <laughs> it felt like we were fighting for our lives, which is what it is. And that's probably the most important thing that I can think of that like going into this game, I was like, how do I just explain how I feel? Because there's a part of me that wants to get out there and give everything I got. You know, I may yeah. be out of shape. <laughs> I may not be able to skate much. But, you know, I want to give her everything I got. Right. And and so I'm going to do that from my seat. I mean, we're, we're, we're talking about, you know, there was a solid crowd. Now, I do know that NF was across the street. So, we're competing with NF. And, well, he's got a pretty good fan base. But, you know what I did here? Because we let out at the same time NF did. Yeah. I did hear downtown a ton of cowbells. I did hear downtown a ton of 
eyebrows fans hooting and hollering. You know what that means? They still got more to give. Mm -hmm. So Friday, seven o'clock. Come on back. We're ready for you. We're ready to do this again. But until then, I need to take a nice, long, hibernating nap. Mm -hmm. So, with that being said, I thank you all for watching. This has been from Milwaukee to Nashville. And by the way, congratulations to the San Jose Sharks on being named the number one overall pick. It literally goes by standings this year. No, I don't think the lottery was rigged, but I do find it interesting that statistically on the standings, everyone fell into their little group. Found that hilarious. So, we'll see what's going to happen. Lots, and there's more hockey to be played. So, see you then.